Is your child defiant, independent, annoyingly inquisitive? After a long, hard day of following the rules, who wants to deal with troublesome kids? 49% of children suffer from Oppositional Defiant Disorder, or ODD. Symptoms of ODD include independent thought, rampant creativity, and failure to submit to authority. But now there's a solution. The good people at Pilfer can help you with their time-release, once-daily capsule, Compliacin. Your child won't be able to form his own opinions, let alone express them. It maintains your child's ability to go to a state-run school and perform simple tasks around the house. You won't have to worry about parenting, and the school won't have to deal with your kid asking questions. Compliacin. You'll go from this. Quit telling me what to do! Quit telling me what to do! Quit telling me what to do! To this. Good morning, Mother. I love going to school. And this week we're learning all about how the government is our federal family and they're here to help us. Compliacin. Talk to your school psychiatrist and ask for it by name. This is What's the license true. called? Uh, it's a permission slip to do what you already know how to do. Exactly. Where they take away permission and then they sell it back to you kind of thing. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 121st episode of the Seeds of Liberty podcast. As always, we are covered by a BIPCOT no government license. This allows reuse by anyone except governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about this at BIPCOT.org. So we are back. I am Jeremy, joined as always by Andre and Dave, who will be along in a second. Uh, what's up, Andre? Yes. And, hey, what's uh, going on, man? Oh, not too much, not too much. Uh, and uh, we were brought to you again by, by this week by Fiend Phone. And this week, our guest is a friend of mine, uh, one of the newest, I think actually the newest Freedom Fiend, and uh, the newly titled Crypto uh, Acupuncturist, uh, Mr. Daryl Becker. Hey, Daryl. Thanks for joining us tonight, man. How are you? Hey, I'm doing good. It's great to be on with you guys. Yeah, it's man. great to be on with you, Daryl. Yes, man. This is or I'm, I'm saying that because I feel obliged to say that. I'm going to find out how great it is. Yeah, exactly. Don't, don't, oh, don't. you're going to be severely disappointed, I promise. Yeah, but go on, if please. You, if you've listened to any of our work, yes, you'll probably be disappointed. But this, is, uh, <laughs> this has been a long time in the making. Uh, you and I have flirted with this idea of trying to get you on for, gosh, I think maybe even before we actually met last year at Porkfest, but definitely we talked about it that night. Um, and, uh, finally now, after you finally joined, joined me over on the fiends and we've got to do a couple of shows together there. Now we finally have you here. So it's, uh, I'm glad we finally worked this out. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I like making it happen. Yeah. Um, and for anybody, if, if I don't know how the noise reduction is going to go on this, but if anybody hears the noise in the background, Daryl is joining us from, uh, Hawaii and there is just a load of different type of animals over there that you cannot drown out no matter what you do. <laughs> so you may hear some birds or frogs later on that sound like birds, depending on time of day. It's interesting stuff. So if, in case people hear the noise, that's what that is. Um, but anyway, so Daryl. I'd be willing to forgive that for the fact that he's in Hawaii. Yeah. So, you know, I'll, I'll give him a pass on that one. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's nice of you. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> So yeah, so uh, so yeah, we 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 named you the. Uh, or I just I just I just renamed you the uh, crypto acupuncturist, and we were we were talking about that uh, a little bit before we started the show, and uh, yeah, you uh, you do that type of stuff. Our former uh, our former co-host Danilo uh, Danilo Cuellar, he's uh, that's his his bag too. I don't have much. He was a people poker. Yeah, I, I don't have I don't have much experience with it. I, I Danilo did hook me up with somebody. Uh, one of his, one of the couple of guys he went to school with uh, earlier this year when I had some problems, and uh, it seemed to help, so I liked it. So, what do you got to tell us about it? Why, why are you into that? And why? The most important question I think that came up just before we started is why are there not more anarchist or voluntarist acupuncturists out there? Oh yeah, so it's easy. I got into holistic healthcare, effective healthcare, modern effective healthcare because I had health problems. And I went to a doctor who, of a doctor of chiropractic, and in Vermont back mm -hmm. then, you know, or right now actually, still any chiropractor can very quickly also gain an acupuncturist license with about 300 mm -hmm. hours of study, and they're done. 
and they got their license, which I'm, you know, pretty psyched about actually. So it's a tool. I like acupuncture is they, they named the entire profession of oriental medicine after one of our tools. That would be like naming a contractor carpenter a, as a skill sawist because they happen to use a, you know, a circular saw very frequently, you know, and or a hammerist. <laughs> yeah. Or a hammerist or something like that. Or like, you know, uh, like a, a roofer when the guy actually builds the entire house. It's so I love the tool. It's a great tool. And I've been using that tool for about 20 years now. And I like effectiveness. I like, I, I, I think of myself as a contractor for the body. I definitely use as many tools as I possibly can. I have been, doing this plenty long enough to acquire many, many tools. And um, mm -hmm. I can tell you that I did go through acupuncture college twice because the first time I happened to enroll in a school that I didn't vet very well. It didn't have full accreditation. It was in candidacy for accreditation. There was a coup inside oh. this little school. It went down. The whole thing was like obliterated and then the board of acupuncture for vermont denied anyone almost everyone who went to that school the ability to get their license even if they just recently graduated like i did so wow i sat on my hands for some years until i found a school over here and moved here and went all the way through school again and don't you just love the arbitrariness <laughs> uh you know a lot of people did both congratulate me and pat me on the back for my perseverance and also with astounded how can you possibly sit through this all over again and 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 what i got to see first of all is i can see things even better when you do it all over again and i did get tapped to be a professor and teach there after i oh, graduated wow. uh but oh. here's the, here's the deal um any type of master's program, and that is a master's program, in case you didn't understand, all acupuncturists go through a very traumatic conditioning <laughs> called a master's of science in oriental medicine. It involves Oof. lots of bullshit, lots of crap, things that you memorize <laughs> and you never, ever, ever, ever use in your clinical practice ever again. You basically memorize things to prove to various classes through tests, papers, and eventually your board exams, which are badass, to, to people that you are a smarty pants in one way, that of being obedient and able to remember things and spit them back out, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and then after you're done with that, when you're done with your board exam, assuming you don't become a professor and start dishing this stuff out to, to another section of people, you pretty much never have to ever use most of the stuff ever again, and you generally get to self-educate from then on. So what happens when you go through a traumatic conditioning system like a master's program? You tend to be very compliant, and you don't really have a lot of mental room and space mm -hmm. to investigate questions of, what is the point of this acupuncture license? Why am I paying this $300 per year? And what, why should I need to have them tell me that I need continuing education credits that cost this much money from this limited number of choices of courses that I don't even have an interest in? You know, And you find out that those people, they're too traumatized, generally speaking, to actually ask those questions. But as they move through their field as any independent acupuncturist, if they're, generally speaking, working for people, for money, like I do, I don't take insurance. You can pay me money for my work, thank you. Nice. Um, or crypto, which is money, you know. <laughs> but, and, uh, you know, if you're... All really I got good, is Dogecoin. Is that, is that going to be okay? It's going to take a lot of Dogecoin <laughs> to, to use to shapeshift into the coin that I want, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but, yeah... Um, it, it is like that, basically. Many of my colleagues who went through schooling, they were traumatically conditioned. It's, tra it's traumatic. I saw so many uh, relationships break apart. I, I saw, you know, the strain between uh, parent and child, you know. The, they're, most of these people, they're trying to often, usually having to pull off some type of part-time job while going through an extremely, absurdly rigorous program of memorization. Which is not just fun. And so that's what happened. And so somehow me and Danilo survived and learned to be consistent. You know, that, that consistency thing, hypocrisy, which probably relates to liberty or seeds mm -hmm. or something in the show title. <laughs> so that's the answer, Jeremy. <laughs> uh, what do you think? <laughs> well, no, that makes perfect sense, actually. That, uh, yeah, I mean, I. I guess that's that would be would apply to a lot of fields. <laughs> People get beat down in those systems, yeah, I, and they don't bother to question. But yeah, I, I never really thought of it that way. But yeah, that makes sense. Uh, well, I'm I'm glad that both. Plus, he likes to poke people. He already admitted it earlier. 
<laughs> well, I think as guys, I think we all have that in common. Okay. Oh, but that's a given. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but uh, well, I'm glad that both you and Danilo found your found your way out of that. But yeah, man, that must. I mean. I, I can understand why people would congratulate you on your perseverance because have, having to go through anything like that once is enough, but having to having to go through it a second time, especially if the, if even if a portion of it is that just monotonous uh, memorization that you were referring to, even though it seemed to be a lot more than just a portion of it, um, to sit through all of that twice buggery. just to get to what you. Uh, to to what you want to do because they make they the, the way they set the system up you know you gotta you gotta jump through all these hoops if you want to do these certain things and uh, get get paid officially for them uh, yeah yes. man that's a lot yeah this is what's the license true. called uh, it's a permission slip to do what you already know how to do exactly they take away permission and then they sell it back to you kind of thing uh, uh, yeah. unless it's a private license obviously yeah <laughs> a private license wow. <laughs> Never seen one of those. Yeah. Well, well, you can license stuff within, like, you could be licensed by a, uh, I don't know, whatever expertise, you know, that re or whatever corporation that regulates whatever industry you're in. Th that those exist. Like uh, the the, I guess the uh, the way to make a uh, comparison would be like admission into a private, like industry group. Like uh, you know how they have. Uh, Crap! I can't remember the name of it. The guys that put the stamp on the uh, electronics to let you know that it's been yeah uh, examined. Underwriters, like underwriters, that. Laboratories. Yeah, underwriters yeah. laboratories. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Daryl. Yeah, paying for I mean, that sticker is like paying for a license. A, exactly, it's not a <laughs> license per se, like we think of a license, because a license carries with the penalty of of sanction if you don't have one. But at the same time, like if you don't have one, it's the a economic license to use that mark that says this, you know, exactly. Yeah, that's that, oh, that. Yeah, like we're using an HTTP, HTTP protocol kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Functional things. <laughs> I was thinking, I thought, like, oh, you know, are you talking about a non disclosure agreement? You know, like, oh. I got to <laughs> sign something to, you know, that I won't share the secrets of Seeds of Liberty somewhere. Oh, <laughs> oh gosh. No. no. Every, no everything we do is bip it, so you can do whatever the heck you want with it. Uh, that's right. The bip cut comes as you work for the to state. Do selected. Mailman, apparently. Apparently, you can disclose to the post if you want. You can. Well, if you so choose. Yeah, the the, 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 one, the the mailman exception that was uh, written into the. They drew first blood. That, that remember was, that. <laughs> remember this. <laughs> oh, I remember that. Po I remember that meme. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, but anyway, yeah, the um, yeah under underwriters laboratory is usually a good example of that type of stuff of what you know the same type of things could be done without the government. So yeah, I mean. I think we've we've discussed that on this show before. I think we've gotten into business licensing and stuff that, you know, the idea of it isn't necessarily bad. It's just when it's monopolized by the state and forced upon you, you know, because I don't know about yeah, you guys, but exactly. I, I, I view a free, I view a hypothetical free society where there are uh, private companies like Underwriters Laboratories that provide similar type services, but it doesn't mean you have to get one. And then everybody will have the option of, choosing the person who has this particular license from this particular private company or another private company or choosing the person who doesn't have one and taking whatever risks they think are involved with that and nobody will be in any be get, have any threat of being penalized for doing so um which is obviously much much more preferable to things like that we have now where you have to have these licenses or they're going to try to throw your ass in jail or people like daryl have to go through this <laughs> um because I, I know other people uh, apparently midwifery there's a lot of this bullshit that goes on and that type of thing too where they have these programs yeah that um they say you only have to go through this certain amount of thing and then you get the certificate and then all of a sudden they up and change it on you i have uh um my, my friend Melissa, who we've talked about a number of times on this show, that happened to her. She was like all the way done with her schooling. And then all of a sudden the school was like, oh, no, nope, we, uh, we're, uh, we're going away. None of your credits count. You got to start all over again. We changed the policy on the whole program, like all this type of bullshit. <laughs> and it's like, they don't care about all the money you've already spent and all the time you've already invested. It's like, nope, if you want to do this, you still have to jump through these hoops all over again. Um, because well, that the malpractice for midwifery though, oh my god! You guys probably haven't ever looked at that malpractice. That is an incredible 
amount of money, <laughs> especially over yeah, here. Yeah, that's that's what's wrong. I've heard, I've, wrong. I've heard, I've heard from her that it uh, is is pretty crazy. But yeah, but um, but it's you know just like anything else. I think you know. I, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, if somebody wants to make use of your services, whether you have this permission slip or not, they should be able to without <laughs> you know. Can't, I mean, you can sign a, a what a, a a consent form to get on like a crazy, you know, Ferris wheel down at the county fair that's ran by some carny that's owned it for fifty years. It could roll off its bolt and kill everyone there, <laughs> but you can't sign off to have someone deliver your baby. I mean, it's kind of doesn't make any sense, does it? Does it make any sense to anybody else? No. Okay. No, just me. What we no. are. What would we do here is, you know, they they just go out on a ship uh, past international waters, and then you know, it's all okay. Oh, that's what I'm going to have up. to do. I'm going to have to practice law in international waters. I'll just have a yacht. I'll just buy a yacht. There you go. And then anytime I'm I'm meeting with clients, I'll just take them out on the yacht, twenty miles out to sea, and then we'll conduct business, and then we'll come back. All you I'll need have the added benefit a- of, of I'll have the added benefit of being able to drum up business because who doesn't want to travel on a yacht? All you need then is a, a lead line roomed inside of it, and you got the whole package, bud. Hey, there you go. Who says I can't make it that way? <laughs> Who says? Just the lead one room. Lined. The rest of, just the just the one room though. Yeah, that way no comms really can get in or out. Boat. Yeah, that would be a really heavy boat. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, man, you got to find some way to block the comms, man. Well, he, That's why they ban lead paint. They're they're listening. They're listening up. The All satellites right. in space. It's called a. Faraday cage, and it's lighter than lead. There you go. Okay. You're a Faraday cage. <laughs> yeah. Your mom's a Faraday cage. Um, I, that's funny. I actually had somebody say something about that to me the other day because I was because somebody was bashing on Bitcoin and you know making the same stupid arguments that if you know if if an EMP goes off, then where's your? There's an electromagnetic. Yeah. Yeah, and then, and like somebody else, and then I said something about the fact that you know or that or no, that's what it was. It was it wasn't even that. It was they were it was book burning. Um, you know, I was talking about if you download the books, you know, if you download books, then you have them in your own possession. You don't have to worry about it anymore. And somebody was like, you know, oh, you got a Faraday cage for your uh, laptop and your, uh, and your, and your drives. And I, and it was just like, who doesn't, don't, you don't have one really? <laughs> <laughs> I thought everybody had one. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In my layer. <laughs> yeah, man. So. But I think Andre, Andre was on to something. You only got to worry about one room, you know, for for that type of stuff. You know, the one soundproof, the one, the one room they can't get into if it's lead lined or lead painted or you just make a giant Faraday cage out well, into a room. You're fine. Sometimes you're having to tell your lawyer some stuff that you might want to just step into a closet, you know, that happens to be painted with a bunch of lead that only you and that other person here. <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm talking about. You know. I think Andre's on to something, though. Maybe we should all shift our, our work to international waters. Maybe, uh, you know, we've, we've talked about... International seas- Waters Incorporated. We, we, we've talked about seasteading on this show before, and uh, I think we talked about... It I am before. down. I'm not backing down from the seastead thing. It's the minute I have the capital to do it, I'm going in. What do you think, Daryl? You want to join us? You want to get a floating acupuncturist thing going on? Come on, let's live on the sea, guys. Ah, we will need something. a holistic medicine. We will need a holistic medicine doctor there. Okay, I work on retainer, but definitely, you know, I'd like to have a cryptocurrency exchange that doesn't suck, you know? And so we'll ha- I was thinking, we're gonna have our- well, oh, it's yeah. okay because we're going to pay you in our own proprietary crypto that you can use on the Seastead. You'll, you'll have yeah. free money. What's, oh, what's wrong with that? Oh, I got the <laughs> SO, SOL coin, <laughs> which yeah. has hey guys, multiple meanings. Yes, yes, it does. <laughs> it sure does. If you're not on the <laughs> SOL colony, you are, in fact, SOL. <laughs> yes, we, we keep the acronym for a reason. It's, it's, a, it's, it's appropriate no matter which one you go with. Uh, wow, you yeah, guys yeah, got fun, furries man, on the coin don't mean shit. I'm no good here. I need something well, more real. Listen, for, no, no, furries yeah. are banned. Just J- FYI, furries are banned. J- James Weeks and I just James Weeks and I just talked about this on the Fiends the other night. There's a there's a new place in Vegas. What, furries? There's a no a gentleman's club that's that's taking Bitcoin for strippers now. You can tip your strippers in Bitcoin. Why can't we? And they that's have, fucking legit. They, they have their they have their own in house. They 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 accept uh, Bitcoin 
and Ethereum, and they have their own in-house currency. So if they have their own in-house cryptocurrency, why can't we have our yeah. own in-house cryptocurrency? Exactly. It's, it goes. It's it, over. It, it fits right into Dave's plan of hyper localization of, of cryptos that Look, we've been if, talking if about for the past clubs, couple of months. If strip clubs and gentlemen's clubs can utilize cryptocurrency, cryptocurrency is here to stay. Oh, it, you guys. Well, here's you, the problem. That was, no, that was James's argument. You guys didn't hear about this though. There's a place in Vegas. No, I, I, I forget I, I the name not. of it. Uh, they were promoting it for for the McGregor Merriweather fight that um you know you can go there and you can pay for your entire night in either Bitcoin or Ethereum or if you purchase their um whatever they call their their in-house heart currency they didn't I don't think they got a name for it they were just using yeah. the, the initials but oh, not only can are going to be the first people not only on that. Can, not only can you pay for everything in this club but the strippers are actually going to be wearing temporary tattoos that are QR codes so oh, you can literally just up. tip your t- tip your stripper by holding your phone up and and snapping and snapping snap this QR code. Son of a bitch! It's it's ingenious. <laughs> what a time to be alive! <laughs> Seriously, man. I mean, and it's I mean, some people that may sound like you know us just being chauvinistic pig men, but you know, in but what da- what what you guys said before, what Dar- it, it, what Andre well, said first is true. It starts there. Well, that's what Dar- said is true. The, the, I mean, Andre said is true. The when it gets to this level, when these type of places start accepting this, and it becomes that much more, you know, more people get exposure to it. It is essentially over. Like this is I I, I really you know James said it the other night on the show, and I, I think he's right too. I, I think this is the start. Like Overstock.com was huge. Like when they when they decided to start accepting Bitcoin, they were the first major company that said we will take this yeah. currency, um, this cryptocurrency. Like that was a big thing. But this. I th- I really think this is like this is insanely huge because this is really bringing it to like, for lack of a better term, the everyman. You know what I mean? If well, yeah, you know the casinos I mean. and and gambling. The minute cryptocurrency takes that, like the minute cryptocurrency is somehow accepted in the gambling world, and it will eventually. Oh uh, yeah, it's I all could, over. I could totally see casinos it's all over. having their own coins. And just having think about how much more wealth coins, that yeah. builds them up. Just think about that wealth, though. They start their own Bitcoin, essentially side coin, whatever their own special, like the uh, the the. I'm, I'm drawing a blank on big casino names right now. <laughs> uh, Mirage. <laughs> the Mirage. Palace. Okay. Caesar's, Caesar's Palace, Palace has Caesar's, Caesar's coin, and you can only use Caesar's coin in there. Okay. I'm gonna ask my landlord. And it has an exchange rate in, in Caesar's Palace. Really? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. You could just have an exchange rate on well, Daryl, Polinex or Daryl, whatever you, other. Well, yeah. Let's. let's Daryl was mentioning before shitty exchanges. I don't think we should start talking about Polinex at the moment. I know a lot of people have issues with Polinex. Yeah. <laughs> fuck. Fuck. Polo, I'm just saying this would allow a bank. <laughs> or, this would allow a casino to become a de facto bank because then their cryptocurrency could have side value because then you could trade it amongst yourself. Right, so you could be out somewhere, and someone would be like, "Well, I don't have any Bitcoin, but I do have Marriott coin, or I do have um, Walmart coin, or whatever." Like the minute these businesses really grasp this, it's over. Every you're gonna have the Walmart app, you're gonna have the Target app, and it's all gonna have their own little currency that you're gonna have to trade your shitty fiat in for their currency. Yeah. What do you think, Daryl? You're, to you're, buy anything from them. You're, you're more of, to you're, buy anything from them. You're more of the crypto expert than we are. You're kind of in that biz, in in that field at the current moment, right? <laughs> the, these businesses want to track but... everything that everyone is buying from them. Everything they want to know who they can advertise to. Once you own a business, you understand this. Pretty much, you want to increase your profit and reduce your expenses. So this is one of those ways, you know. And on all of our phones, I mean, we got wallets that are pretty much shapeshift ability to take any coin to any coin right there in the wallet. Mm-hmm. I certainly got right there uh, in the wallet. A, it's over. <laughs> yeah, I, you have a big wallet on my which phone. Is like your gold standard. Yeah. Yep. I I do love my Jack's wallet. I really wish they would hurry up with the uh, Bitcoin Cash in- implementation that they keep promising. But you know, other than that, I like them. <laughs> yeah, that'd be nice. No doubt. That I haven't nice. even claimed my Bitcoin cash. I, I haven't either. I, I haven't split mine yet either because I was I was I went oh out of my, my way to try to find out how to go about doing it. 
And then Jack said, you know, the Jack's wallet team said that they were working on it and just give us a couple of weeks. So I've been patiently waiting and patiently waiting. And then I think, I think uh, last week somebody was asking them on Twitter and they were just like, Oh, just keep paying attention to our Twitter. We're going to announce something. And then I didn't see a tweet at all for them for like three or four days. I'm like, you guys are killing me here. Do you uh, want to, do you want to give a quick rundown on how to, how to claim your cash, Daryl? Do you, do, do you what? know the, the, a quick, you don't know the quick rundown? I don't think there is a quick no, rundown. No, yeah, it was for a the quick audience. rundown. Um, okay, here, I'll, I'll just like a quick broad rundown. Broad strokes, broad strokes. Broad strokes, I, I enter in, like I'm going to the link right now. I enter into Steam it, uh, you know, put Steam it right there into your search engine and how to get Bitcoin cash using whatever wallet you have. I, I use Airbits, that's where I... Before the fork, I put all of my Bitcoin that I owned into Airbits, hoping that that would uh-huh, be the way, really? based on the research I had done, which, by the way, is not perfect. And then an Electron Cash wallet, and that means you got to build an Electron Cash wallet. You think that's a nice, easy you know, user interface type of wallet? No, it is not. But that's basically the fast way to do it. And then go about the process of doing all these instructions. Uh, I'm, go- I'm looking down at a series of... This is a nice So pages. it's not for the faint of heart. No, like, no it is the, not. The, no, the, average, the average Bitcoin buyer, messer arounder is not going to be able to handle this. Uh, no, this is what you pay someone like me to go do for you. And, and then yep. I will take some of that Bitcoin cash for the price of giving you some of yours. You yeah, know, we'll see. <laughs> that's what will happen. If you're not, <laughs> or you can do it yourself. If you're, if you're not savvy, <laughs> you know. savvy, then yeah, call Daryl. I know I've seen a couple other people offering similar such services. And, you know, I don't know. I belong, I belong to a bunch of different Facebook groups on, you know, crypto groups where people like lay out these yeah. steps of how to, how to do it through eat, like whichever, because I think, what is it? Is it Kon- Konami is another one that's, that's, uh, makes it relatively easy. I think there's the, the- uh, Exodus wallet as breaks right open and into that. Uh, my friend Rich did that. He said in 15 minutes, he claimed his Bitcoin cash. Yeah, um, cer- certain but, wallets are ahead of the curve on this because certain ones, certain ones said from the outset that they were going to be, they were going to implement it. Other ones claim the they weren't. What's the long-term prospects of this Bitcoin Cash, though? Like, what's the long-term prospects? Oh, uh, I, easy because I can see the future. If, if, Bitcoin if, Cash is going to rise up to about. I'm asking your opinion here. <laughs> Sixty-seven hundred dollars. You heard Just it here, folks. <laughs> totally spitballing it. You heard it here. Well, if, um, if however. You, it could take a little time. <laughs> yeah, that's the you know my, mileage may vary. Well, if if you if you have if you have faith in the uh, Bitcoin Jesus, it's going places. You know, I think I think uh, Roger Veer is still heartily behind this whole whole idea, and uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I I he's been pretty right. I've I've, I've said I've said I've said before that I, I don't have faith in a lot of things, but I do have faith in Roger Veer because he hasn't started me wrong yet, <laughs> and uh, you know. So I, I'm just I, I I'm still holding mine. I don't I don't plan on getting rid of them anytime soon. Uh, last I saw, it was still currently trading between six and seven hundred today, right? Uh, per Bitcoin Cash, I think so. Uh, exactly, you, know, you got it. Still still looking pretty good. Well, damn, I need to find out how to claim mine because that's that's a lot of money for me. <laughs> well, yeah, from for like, so yeah, just put it in your search engine. Just like like uh, Steam it. How to claim Bitcoin Cash with and then fill in the name of your wallet. Yeah, there's They'll definitely have a, tutorials. Like a bunch everywhere. of articles on it. Yep, but it's uh, yeah, they do. But and thank they, you for plugging Steam it, by the way, because that's how that's how I make my stuff happen. That's uh, how you make your money. You make a living on Steam it. Uh, the, I'm trying. I'm working on it he, slowly. He, he doesn't not, quite make I'm a living there, there, but he spends I'm a lot of time there. there. I'm getting there. <laughs> I, do, I do actually. I do have. He's I do not. Have a he's of not posting projects. ass. He's not posting glam shots. That's that's the problem. No. Well, you know, it's nobody wants to take a look at my hairy ass, so. Sadly, that's not my money maker, but I am running a witness node and doing a couple other things. So I do have some things in the pipeline, which actually I'm going to talk to you, Jeremy, about uh, after the show because I did want to ask a question to you. Okay, cool. The witness protection agency. <laughs> witness no, protection witness agency. Nice. No, it's uh it, for for Steam. It, I'm, I'm sure you're a little bit familiar with it, but instead of miners, they have uh, witnesses. So instead of yeah. you actually mining the blocks, you just witness the transaction. It's it's essentially mining, but it's it's a different process. You don't get paid for how many blocks you produce. You get paid for um how many blocks you witness how many transactions you solve i want to be really a bit more you know transparent to disclose that i am a little consultant 
So I set up people with wallets and exchanges and things like that. And uh, I am part of a network of people where I refer people out when they've got mining things to do and when they've got an initial coin offer that they want to create and when they have some type of uh, what are they, trading, when, when, they, when they want to get their trading bots in order, that kind of thing. I, I have people that I farm out for that kind of stuff. So, you know, the neat thing is the witness thing that you said about Steemit, that was news to me because <laughs> I don't really study Steemit that much. I'm like studying exchanges and wallets and security and such, you know. I mean, really, really, to be to be honest, it's not uh, I like it's not something that, uh, that I would really consider within your portfolio of things to do because it just it doesn't it's not something you can you can farm work out to, I guess, is the, the best way to describe it. Because like as a witness, you don't get paid. You get paid uh, based on how many blocks you witness or how many blocks you solve but the number of blocks you receive is based on your ranking which is a community thing you get voted in as a witness so interesting oh all right yeah so anyway do you have all the the formulas and strategies for proper making a living writing on steam it no i don't other people do, and that you can look up. You out there, the listener, can look up Steemit articles on exactly that subject. <laughs> of how to make a living on Steemit. <laughs> I will say this: it is it is possible to do. It does require quite a bit of effort, and you have to spend time getting to know people. Certain people, preferably more than others, but uh, it can be done. It can be done. Know a whale or two. Yeah, that, uh, preferably like four or five, and you'll be set for life, pretty much. Yeah. Or get enough people to vote for you as witness. Like the top twenty witnesses, they make I think uh two hundred and forty one steam per day, if I remember correctly. Wow. Yeah. Huh. So what's, what's Steam currently at? <laughs> uh about a dollar. Oh, is it uh, uh, yeah, it was lower it was lower It's, last a, time it's it a little over a dollar. I think it's like a dollar twenty last I checked. I need to start posting all of our stuff from the just have it automatically post from our RSS to that. I didn't we try that once? I thought we tried that once before. Uh, there's just, there's a utility there, there's a utility that can do what I think if I remember correctly. I, I can look it up for you guys and get you the info. If, I think you're works, better off with a tooth fairy. But <laughs> you shut up. You. It works. I just um uh, ha I just had a hard time keeping up with posting it. No, I meant the real tooth fairy. Like Jeremy's got actual twins who likely are going to lose teeth in a healthy, natural kind of way. And anytime they have their cute little faces on Facebook and holding up like their QR codes for <laughs> this oh. is where we want the tooth fairy to send our Bitcoin to. Oh, see, you'll have a I lot like of this. heartstrings like and a lot, a lot of people. I could, uh, I could, kind of tooth fairy I'm talking except about. my kids already know that the food tooth fairy doesn't exist. I was way I, to just oh. destroy yeah, their but, childhood. Uh, uh, yes, I, mean, I am job. a horrible, horrible yeah, human the, being. Everyone else on Facebook doesn't Bitcoin. know that. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hold this. Pray on their ignorance. It's what, pray on their ignorance. It's what smart people have been doing for thousands of years. Okay? I know. There's I know. no. There is no shame Dan, in it. It is not immoral or unethical. Dan, yeah, not at all. Dan, damn, damn me for trying to set a good example for my children. Uh, you know, but yeah, no, I, 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 I squashed that one real, real quick. Luckily, their mom was on board with that one too. But you know, I, I want, I wanted to squash the Santa one before it happened. Unfortunately, I got outvoted. Still don't know how that works, considering there was two of us. But anyway, uh, <laughs> I uh, yeah. So screw the tooth fairy. I think I think my kids like just. I think they still get money, but they know it comes from mom, so that's cool. <laughs> yeah, that's why I was suggesting just their their cute faces, their QR codes out there on Facebook, and that's gonna pull a lot of heartstrings, and that. That's that's kind of like the aw version of, of the tramp stamp, you know, um, QR code that is going on in Nevada or wherever. <laughs> the <else they> aw <laughs> version. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I do fully into I do fully intend once they start getting out there and setting up their little lemonade stands that they want to that they want to do because they they want to rebel already. Um, you know, I plan on getting getting them a QR code for that too, and uh, hoping to introduce more people to Bitcoin. That'll be great if I can get my little six-year-olds to understand Bitcoin before other people can, and they'll just be out there explaining it to people when they say, what's this? Well, you see here, if you have your cell phone, you can pay me right now. <laughs> I fully intend when I have a law practice to accept payment in Bitcoin or Ethereum oh. or, I mean, what el whatever else Ooh, is going to be. Or there, whatever so. is the big thing at the time. You're going for your I JD? Yes, I am, as a matter oh of my. fact. I am in week wow. two, and it's oh. fucking intense. 
Yes, we spoke about that wow. briefly. Holy sweet like, Jesus. Andre, Andre just Holy dog uh-huh. shit. <laughs> um, yeah, so so this guy who's going through his JD program, give him a lot of love and attention and support because that's a traumatic experience, by the way. <laughs> so just saying. There you go. It, it certainly is. I have I have the amount of time I've spent doing things other than reading law and making case briefs for the last week total has been about like 15 minutes wow i make my i make my daughter dinner that's that's my that's my time off from studying Let me Whoa, put it that we way. got another parent in here wait do we all yeah. have kids no no uh, dave's. dave doesn't dave's, dave's the odd man out. No, I don't. all right it's too late for you man <laughs> that'll never happen damn my high time <laughs> preference <laughs> yes how dare you damn that high time preference <laughs> damn it well sometimes uh, it just happens, you know. <laughs> yes, this is true. Sometimes it happens. it just happens. It can happen to anybody. Sometimes it happens times two, um, you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. Times two. At you the just same you time. just walk into a room, trip, fall, and suddenly your dick's in another, and th- your dick's in a woman, and th- there it is. Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> it just happens. This is it absolutely. was an accident. Could happen to anybody. Could I happen think to it was anybody. some some Arabian <laughs> sheik or something like that. Got away. Tried to get away with that excuse. <laughs> What? What? I tripped, fell. She landed on my dick. It I'm is, sorry. I, I fell. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, Daryl, uh, do you have any podcasts or anything you want to uh, like pages or or anything you want to talk about? Like, or plug I'm, I'm the, kind of out of the loop on, unless, on everything you do. Yeah. All right. So, plug in my business, DB Crypto, Daryl Becker Crypto. That's but you know, DB Crypto is the way to find it, and that's a dot com. DB Cooper. Crypto. Yeah, DB Cooper is a fascinating wormhole to go down. But yeah, <laughs> DB Crypto is my consulting business. But voluntaryvisions.com, that's my audio portfolio. So most of the podcasts and things that I've been on, except I haven't been posting every single Fiends episode. Um, oh, how dare you? Just a couple. You know, I'm going to change that. Uh, I'll get them all up there because I think, I think I'm... Shun the non-believer. I'm happy with all of them. <laughs> so but you know it's, it's cool to have a site that's just your just your audio portfolio um and now flipping it back to you do you have a site that you want to plug on your <laughs> <show>? <laughs> oh we always plug uh, we always plug our site at the end of the oh, show oh we always do i promise uh, drudge report that's pretty much the only site i really <laughs> I mean, <laughs> when i think of the I don't know, solpodcast.org that one right there yeah. That's, the only, that's the only website I go to every day. You guys are a .org? We are oh. now, yes, because Dave let, let our last domain sure. slip away, and uh, we went, we went with the, Someone we went, the, we, we went with the org this time. <laughs> okay. Well, I also have uh, uh, the Seeds of Liberty, our Seeds of Liberty Podcast dot com, but I don't know, it's so long. Yeah, I hate long URLs. They can they can be quite annoying. And I hate long goodbyes. And I've got six <laughs> minutes. That's a pretty long goodbye. Yes, that is. <laughs> well, you better you better start now. You better start now. <laughs> What's oh. what, what are your what are your thoughts on the uh, whole uh, uh, open Chris Cantwell border thing? closed border? <laughs> uh, Chris Cantwell alt right left wing closed can't not, well or like open can't thing. well I, th- I thought we weren't oh, going I'm down this route <laughs> like what do you what do you like what, what what's your thoughts on the whole thing let's get oh the that's Darryl easy Becker report borders daryl becker style i i don't even presently i'm not even a property owner property renter and those are the borders that i have so when it comes to other people's stuff, I've learned that I stop telling other people what to do with their stuff unless they ask me, especially if they pay me, to, <laughs> for my opinion. Then I'll tell you what to do with your stuff. So those borders, what Mexican border and Canadian border and all these various, I guess, what is that? I think it's up to United Nations recognizes somewhere in the 230 different tax farm kind of things. The United States recognizes the more the merrier. Right. So all those tax farm borders, those are militarily controlled things owned by people who actually have the military might to demonstrate that they own it. Whether you might call it rightful or not, regardless, own it, their guns say they own it. End of story. You're, you're not so talking I don't about tell other people you're what to do. Like, complete might. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, they they they're not the type of uh, owners that I would say I have got. They've earned my respect for how they acquired it, but they own it, and I don't tell people what to do with their stuff. Uh, even in that situation, I I think it's about that simple. I just don't tell other people what to do with their stuff. I I, w- I want there to be eight billion political borders on this planet. Right, so. like that. Yeah, that would make sense. I was trying to explain to my friend yesterday. It was like. I would prefer that every square inch was privately owned on this planet and also that there was a complete plurality of arbitration, security, and logistics companies that were all, I would say, you know, at the very least, you know, providing comparative services so that you could go from the extremely free to the super elite pricey of whatever it is that they're providing. I agree 100%. Hell yeah. (laughs) That's actually what I want to get into law to do is arbitration. That's like that's that's the one thing that I want to push for and have later on. Oof. I love arbitration. <clears throat> it's cool that there's actually an awesome mediation center over here and I went through a like a two weekend training. It's pretty awesome. Mediation, it's a process. It's quite a process. It's hours. It certainly is. It certainly is. Yeah. Well, because I mean um, essentially it's 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 counseling. You're trying to reach a, a a solution that both sides, you know, agree to without ruling in favor of one or the other because the difference between mediation and arbitration is mediation is coming to a resolution together and arbitration is choosing one side or the other exactly arbitration Arbitration is an alternative to courts well arbitration is a service you have to say you're you're, as an arbiter you're selling i mean mediation mediation is a service too exactly it's a product like they're coming to you two people are coming to you for a product and that product is a decision make and the way it's done is it's like amazing when you see it really well done. I mean, obviously, it could be crappily done, too. And you could have people there in bad faith who, like, one of them or both not really wanting to agree with each other, you know. And that's just bad yeah. faith. But but basically, you know, I, I went through this. Uh, I was once married. I did a divorce, and that was helped along by mediation. And I was kind of amazed because I show up with my soon-to-be ex-wife, and there are two mediators, a man and a woman. And they are staying on point. And in each of these hour-long sessions, we go from laying out all the procedures and all the particulars to making decisions and making it completely agreeable. And unlike when you have like a therapist or someone who's like trying to counsel a man and woman, something like that, usually then that that person happens to be a man or a woman. So then the whole thing is gender imbalanced. (laughs) But in this situation, you don't have that. If it's two men, they have two men. You know, Interesting. If it's a man and a Genderism. woman, they have a man and a woman. And that way it's not a ganging up and you've never met them before. So, you know, you know, mediation's pretty awesome, but it does not pay as well as your incredible legal fees are going to pay you, by the way. <laughs> uh, my incredible <laughs> yeah. legal fees probably won't be incredible. So I, I'm, I'm already preparing myself for the, the it, event it that I'm going to be me. scratching out I'm a living. Need a Saul. Wow. Uh, oh, need really? Saul Goodman, um, yeah, oh man okay well you, you you heard it here first folks i am going to be uh on retainer to dave painter some somehow once i get my hey, uh, yeah once i sit for the bar somehow i, I got like yeah, yeah, like was, uh 40 seconds to say goodbye uh, uh, all right go ahead Darryl. yeah Darryl, why do you yeah uh, i just want to say it it was it was a, a royal honor and an extreme pain to, <laughs> to go through this process with you guys uh but I'm glad that I can say swears on your show, and I look forward to the next time. Yes, man. Well, I'm glad we finally got you here. Thank you uh, for giving. Yeah, us it was a pleasure to tonight. meet you, man. It was. And, yeah, uh, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna go, and it. now you guys can can talk about me behind my back, and I look forward to hearing Sweet. the full recording of that. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> Thanks for the permission. Have man. a good night, man. <laughs> Take hey, it easy, right, guys. Anyways, man. now that I'll that guy's gone, worms. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, he had. Uh, I know he had a hard out to get to, but yeah. that's a great guy. Daryl is man. I yeah, that, yeah, he is. He seems he seems like a, a really good guy to to hang around and talk to. Yeah, I, I had the opportunity to meet him last year at Porkfest and hang out with him for a little bit and take part in that crazy ass long long ass uh, Dawn of Freedom podcast with him. And uh, you know, I've I've always been a, I've been a fan of his work ever since I first stumbled across him through school the School Sucks Project because uh, he did a lot of shows with uh, yeah. with Brett back in the day. And, uh, yeah, 
He's got a got a, yeah, a lot of interesting views, uh, and uh, he's into some cool stuff. So, and uh, like as, like we said earlier, I seriously can't wait to get done with school, so I'll be able to go and like hang out with all of you guys in real life at all of these gatherings and shit that I never go to. You'll be hanging I'm out. I'm 30 with years old. Life. It's about fucking time. <laughs> hey man, you're still ahead of my curve, so you're uh, you're, you're still in good shape. I didn't I I didn't I didn't start going to my first festival until I was almost 40. So you know. <laughs> You've still got <laughs> you've still got plenty of time to get get in there before me, man. You'll be good. <laughs> anyway, yeah, forty is the new twenty. Anyways, everyone knows that. Yeah, I I mean, people say that all the time, and I used to think that kind of stuff was bunk. But most of the time, I don't feel much older than twenty five, thirty. You know, most days I feel like I'm forty five most days, but I think that has more to do with my knees and uh, my hips and my back, oh. which for oh, obvious reasons are probably not in as good shape. But uh, go on. Well, no, I was good. That's that, the, the days that my bad days, like, yeah, when my, when my back kicks, my, my back gets, uh, back is all off or whatever. Yeah. Those days I feel old, but you know, most days I don't, I don't <laughs> feel that old. So, you know, until people remind me of it or that I see my kids and you know, they're like, you know, gigantic compared to the last time I saw them two days beforehand. And <laughs> I'm like, stop growing. You're making daddy feel older. Yes. <laughs> anyway. Oh yeah. When they get in there, when they get like 20 years old then you'll feel old oh, oh I, well like i said man it, it happens quite regularly i look at them you know you blink and they're 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 just they're just that much bigger and it's like wow time, yeah time's it's really like, flying. Like every day they seem they seem just a little bit bigger like you could have sworn they weren't quite that big the last time you saw them you know yesterday or the day before or last week yeah so i i don't i don't look in mirrors that often so that's my mirror when i look at them and i realize they keep getting bigger every day it's like yeah every day they get bigger i get that much fucking older <laughs> <laughs> Uh, any hoodle but on that note uh, I guess we'll get wrapping up since Daryl had to bug out early but that works out well for us um, I got a dog in the background who doesn't just doesn't she want to shut up tonight anyway no matter how many times I tell him to so you guys have anything else before we close out I just uh, uh, n- love no, doing good I love doing the show with both of you guys Andre it was a pleasure Jeremy it was a pleasure Daryl if you're hearing this it was a pleasure uh, and it that's certainly all I was. It certainly was. I love you guys too. You guys are great. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, I'm always, Nothing always, but love. always, Nothing always, but love. Yeah, always fun to do a show with you guys. Well, at least you, Andre. Most of the time, it's fun to do with you, Dave. <laughs> 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 All right. On that note, we will get closing out. So, Daryl, yeah, if you listen to this, thanks again for joining us tonight, man. This was, uh, gl- I'm glad we finally got him on. Uh, it's been a long time coming. Uh, as we did, as we did mention, our website is solpodcast.org. All of our information can be found there. And you can also find links to other podcasts on there, including the other shows I'm on and the show that Daryl's on with me, The Freedom Fiends. Um, and there's also links to the Lowberts there, which we just we just put out a new Lowberts a couple uh, two days ago, Jim and I. So check that out too. And the Patreon's still there, patreon.com slash Seeds of Liberty. And yes, I thank promise you, you. there will be new content in another month. And uh, thank you, everybody, who continues to tribute, contribute. Thank you, everybody, for listening tonight. And we will catch you next time. Peace. Peace in the Middle East. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. Basic Handgun and Rifle with Jared Waltz. First rule of being alive is you own yourself. A groundbreaking approach to firearms and self-defense training. Beautifully filmed and easy to understand instructions make this one a must-have. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. New DVD from Michael W. Dean. Available on Amazon. Cell 411 is a free app for Android and iOS that replaces government-controlled 911. Cell 411 allows you to preset a group of friends or private organizations to show up in any emergency. Cell 411 is a nightmare for the state because it proves their so-called services aren't needed. Cell 411 has had thousands of installs, and of course it's covered by the Bipcot No Government License. Cell 411 because your friends won't shoot you when you're in trouble. 
Without the government, who would build the emergency services? You and Cell 411. Get it today at GetCell411.com. That's GetCell411.com.